Hello guys, welcome to session number 12 of our KCD 2023 one shot revision series. Today's topic will be thermodynamics and in the bracket it's 1.14 which means approximately one question has come every year from this chapter. There have been years where there has uh, there have been two questions from this chapter. Um, yeah, that, that would be the weightage part of the chapter. So I'll be starting off with basic terms. As you know, there is obviously a lot of theoretical part in this chapter, especially the chemistry, uh, like thermodynamics in the chemistry sector has a lot more theory. So I'll be just um, going through some of the basic terms. You can read NCRT to know like more in depth. So yeah, I'm just going to be highlighting them and explaining um, in brief. So open system, as you know, it's a system where uh, listen to my words carefully and you can write them down. It's a system where both energy and mass is going to be transferred uh, between the system and the surrounding. So closed system, only energy is going to be transferred between the system and the surrounding. Whereas isolated system, neither energy, neither mass will be shifted, uh, sorry, will be transferred between the system and the surrounding. So there are two types of wall. Uh, one would be adiabatic wall and the other one would be diathermal wall. So obviously one would... Um, allow passage of energy and the other would not allow the passage of energy. You can just read the NCRT. And there are two types of quantity which is mentioned later on in the chapter, which is going to be extensive quantity and intensive quantity. It's there even in chemistry. And um, the meaning is that extensive quantity is a quantity that does not depend on the size of the um, I'm not sure why it's not working. Yeah, so extensive proper, uh, extensive quantity is a quantity which, as you can see, I've written M and I've put a tick mark, which means it depends on the amount of substance or amount of matter or the mass. As you can see, the mass, it depends on the mass of the body. Whereas intensive quantity is a quantity which actually does not depend on the amount of substance, amount of matter or the mass. So I've written M and I've put a cross on top of it. And the examples for extensive quantity, as you can see, would be volume and energy, meaning it could be internal energy, it could be enthalpy, it could be all types of energy. That's why I've just written energy and mass itself, obviously. And in case of intensive quantity, the examples would be density. And as you can see, mu over here, which means refractive index. I've used that example because it's physics and I didn't want to use like um, other terms but yeah there are many examples you can just search it on the internet one thing that you have to know is an extensive quantity by an extensive quantity will give an intensive quantity and if you're wondering how you can take the example of density itself so it is going to be density as you know is mass by volume and um, both mass and volume it's extensive quantity so uh, the result of it which is density is an intensive quantity because of this relation so I've written that too um, you can just mark it down or you can note it down somewhere so after this, I'll be moving on to zeroth law of thermodynamics. So as you can see, there is this diagram where, um, you know, there is, let's say, a system C, and then there is a system A, and then there's a system B, which is separated, of course, by an adiabatic wall. You can look at the diagram in NCRT too. So in this case, what it states is if A and C, if A, a and C, like if A and C are in thermal equilibrium, as you can see, I've written the same. If A and C in thermal equilibrium, and B and C in thermal equi equilibrium, which means B and C in thermal equilibrium, then the conclusion of this WCS means we can say that A and B are in thermal equilibrium too. So this is going to be zeroth law of thermodynamics. So next one would be science. Uh, I've written this as a separate column because people might tend to get confused between the science in chemistry and physics. The sign for work done is different in case of physics. Rest of it, it's the same in case of chemistry and physics. So as you can see, uh, sign first one would be if let's say heat is added to the system. So I've written heat and over here the symbols I'll be explaining in the beginning. Q means heat, T means, te T means temperature, U means internal energy and W means work done and V means volume. So with that, um, as you can see, Q being added to the system, heat being added to the system is going to be positive and uh, the same way heat being um, removed from the system or basically loss of heat as you can see Q going downward arrow and upward arrow means increase and decrease. So Q decrease will be negative. So same way volume increase increase or you can also say vol okay actually I will just do a one by one volume increase in volume is going to be positive if it's increase in volume is po if there's increase in volume then it's positive taken as positive and if there's decrease in volume then you should take it as negative so I'll be connect like I'll be correlating it as you can see work done by the system so let's say there is uh, a system like this and then there's a piston and there is some kind of a gas inside this so if the work done is being so this is going to be the system as you know and this will be the surrounding outside would be the surrounding so in physics if the system does the work which means so also pardon me for the bad handwriting i'm using a mouse at the moment uh, while us using the annotation so yeah as you can see the gas if it like does the work on the piston so that means the system is doing the work when system does the work as you can see over here volume is increasing so that's why when system is doing the work and volume is increasing it means work done by the system so if work done by the system is positive it obviously means even volume increase would be positive because both of these are correlated so i'll just connect it with an arrow as you can see work done by the system would obviously mean there would be increase in volume because the piston is going upwards and the volume is increasing so the same way work done on the system which means the surrounding is doing the work on the system that time this piston will go down and the volume will decrease so when the volume is decreasing as you can see over here it's negative which means work done on the system would also be negative so i'll just kind of correlate it with an arrow the same way i um, did, did for the other case so the same way as you know uh, temperature is actually directly proportional to u by the way you have to know this which means internal energy is directly proportional to temperature and this will come in handy like it'll come um, in into a lot of help so as you can see over here when t is decreasing it means even internal energy will be decreasing which means negative so this is just like how it's in chemistry and the same way if t increases u increases so it would be positive overall so that would be um yeah, that would be science part of the chapter, like sign sign of the chap sign of the quantities and everything. So next one, first law of thermodynamics. So under this, uh, the first law of thermodynamics, as you can see, it's directly or like I've written it over here. DQ is equal to du plus dw. It's basically conservation of energy. So um, over here, d can can be. By the way, in all these equations over here, it can be d or delta. Like you can see in a lot of cases, it could be d or it could be delta. That's why I've like written this. As you can see, delta, and I put this. Uh, in, I put this double arrowhead um, symbol with D, which means the same equation can also be written as delta Q is equal to delta U plus delta W. So I won't be explaining it for the other cases. I've just explained it once over here. Um, so yeah. And with that, I'll be now proceeding. 
so there are a lot of formulae and equations over here but trust me the actual meaning of it is actually there in chemistry i'll be however giving you the basic meaning and by the way this specific heat part has already been done in the done in the previous chapter you can watch all the videos in the playlist join my telegram group for getting your doubts cleared i've told this many times and you can also watch your orientation session to know what to do after watching these lectures so yeah i won't be reiterating it many times um, and now as you can see here capital s and there is small s capital s meaning heat capacity and small s meaning specific heat capacity and the formula is given by this of course d can be replaced with delta and i've already shown once with the first law of thermodynamics how it's done so capital c as you can see it's molar heat capacity which means it is just like specific heat capacity but instead of m it's n in the denominator which means number of moles so this at constant pressure so i'll just write um p over here which means constant pressure i hope you'll be able to understand constant pressure meaning p and over here v which means constant volume so molar heat capacity at constant pressure is given by cp and constant volume it's given by cv so with that you also need to know that if the pressure external is constant then delta w is equal to p delta v this is an important formula the work done formula when pressure is uh, external pressure is constant is given by this w is equal to p delta v where delta v is change in volume and delta v is work done so it's obviously the typical notation so this i've already mentioned in the previous chapter this is just an observation heat capacity is equal to m times specific heat capacity so another new term over here sorry or new equation over here would be this uh, along with yeah this would be the important equation over here so i'll be explaining the terms don't worry du meaning yeah basically u meaning internal energy du is equal to f by 2 times n r dt which means over here f is degree of freedom so uh, that's one that's one thing i wanted to mention that is uh, by the way the undo button is not working once again so i'll have to be using the raise button so as i've already mentioned in the previous lecture uh, or actually i've not mentioned basically uh, the thing is i'll be i'll not be clubbing ktg which is kinetic theory of gases or in ncert it's given as kinetic theory i'm assuming kinetic theory with thermodynamics i'll be doing kinetic theory as a separate chapter which means the other equi partition um, energy theory all of that will be done in the next chapter however you have to just know this formula over here i'm just writing it so du is equal to f by 2 n r dt where r is real gas constant and um, f would be uh, not not real gas constant i'm sorry uh, R is going to be the uh, universal gas constant, and F is going to be degree of freedom. So Cp minus Cv is equal to R. This is Mayer's relation, and also you need to know that Cp by Cv is equal to gamma. So that is in turn equal to one plus two by F, which is because of the fact that Cv is equal to F by two R, and C. Uh, where is the other one? Okay, I've not written it, but I'll just write it over here. Cp is equal to F by two, F by two plus one, plus one, whole times R. So I know this is very shabby, but uh, I hope you can understand. Cp is equal to F. F by two plus one whole times R. So when you uh, when you divide it, you'll be getting this as the final one plus two by F, which is equal to gamma over here, by the way. And as you can see, delta U is equal to n C V delta T. And you have to note that this might be very similar to this equation over here, as you can see, uh, the molar uh, molar heat capacity. But the thing over here is it is C V over here. And over here, enthalpy delta H means enthalpy. It's in, it's in chemistry, but I've even included it over here. Is equal to n C P delta T over here. C P. It's not C V. And obviously, delta Q is equal to n C delta T. And I've written this can, this like this can be exchanged. So I'll even be highlighting it. So here I've highlighted all the equations, almost all of the equations. And yeah, th that is under the first law of thermodynamics heading. So next one, next part of the chapter will be processes. So first one will be quasi-static process. As you can see, I've written quasi-static process. It is a slow process and it's hypothetical. Uh, hypothetical. So you can read the NCERT for the explanation. But these two are the important words. Quasi-static will be done in even in reversible process. It's uh, done. So uh, it's hypothetical, by the way. And over here, isothermal would be the next one. So over here, I've written all the important equations or formulae. And also, I've written the points along with the modification of the equation and everything under one small uh, box. So isothermal for the graph, you can check in chemistry. It will be done in states of matter chapter, Charles Law, Boyle's Law. It's not there in uh, the physics chapters. So are not included. So isothermal, as you can see, is when delta T is equal to zero, which means T is constant. So this is the first thing that you have to know. Note it down. This basically means that if delta T is equal to zero because T is constant, then delta U is also equal to zero because I mentioned above that, or actually it's mentioned here, right? As you can see, du is equal to f by two n r dt. So if dt is zero, then du will also be zero. So the same thing is written over here. And what is the first law of thermodynamics? It will it will become this as du, as you can see, becomes zero. The equation will become this. So uh, isothermal, the equation is actually PV is equal to constant from Boyle's Law. And what then the equation is W D is equal to N R T ln bracket V two by V one, which can also be equal to N R T ln bracket P one by P two. Over here V two is equal to final volume and P two is equal to final volume. P one and V one it's going to be initial um, pressure and volume respectively. So yeah, you can just note this equation down. Very important. There could be a direct formula based question. You have to just know how you should convert ln to log. So I just write it over here. But ln is equal to 2.303. Okay. Um, you can just uh, I'll be I'll be including it in the notes later on maybe, but you can just search it on the internet. The mouse is kind of it's it's really frustrating to write it with it. So as you can see, adiabatic would be the next process. So for adiabatic process, as you might know, delta Q is equal to zero, which means change in heat is equal to zero. So this means the equation can be written as delta W is equal to minus delta U. Obviously, from first law of thermodynamics, when um, Q this this term becomes zero, you can um, you know you can send this over here and it will become like this. So It's basically equal to minus n C V delta T. It's obviously from this equation, as you can see, delta U is equal to n C V delta T. So now there's just a negative because of this over here. And adiabatic, it's P V to the power gamma is equal to constant. Please note, it's not P V is equal to constant. It's P V to the power gamma, which is equal to constant. And nowadays, because this is written in NCERT, you can rearrange it and write it in terms of T and P and V also. So this is the, uh, the other equation. It's not in NCERT, but I have a feeling this will be coming because it's pretty uh, important. And this can also be written as this. So what this means is this equation can be written in two ways. One is going to be like this, and the other is going to be like this. The derivation is obviously going to be uh, pretty hard mathematically. at this stage so 
I've just written the final equation. T V to the power gamma minus one is equal to constant or T to the power gamma times P to the power one minus gamma is equal to constant. And work done uh, formula as you can see I've written over here N R bracket T two minus T one by one minus gamma or it can also be written as P V uh, P bracket V two minus V one by one minus gamma as uh, you know P delta V is equal to N R delta T. So it's from this equation that I've written. So yeah, that is the work done in case of a diabetic process. So next one would be isochoric process, and isochoric process means delta v is equal to zero as v is constant. So this means the work done would be equal to zero. It's from this equation. Oh, oh no. So without the undo feature, um, something really bad happened, and I'm back. I paused the video and I fixed it. So I'm not sure where I stopped last time, but uh, I'll be continuing. So delta w will be equal to zero in case of isochoric process. Um, as you know, it's from the equation. I was about to show the equation. I think that's when this happened. So it's from this equation, as you can see, uh, w is equal to p delta v. So if delta v is equal to zero, then delta w will be equal to zero. And from first law, law of thermodynamics, when w um, when delta, delta w is equal to zero, it will become this. And this uh, isochoric process in general is given by p by t is equal to constant. So that is. And there was another disturbance, so I paused it again. Um, anyways, so isobaric process. So isobaric process, as you can see over here, uh, it is given by isobaric process. The actual definition would be v by t is equal to constant, and and um, as you can see over here, work done would be equal to p delta v. It's going to be the uh, actual formula itself because over here pressure is going to be constant. Isobaric, the actual definition is pressure will be constant, and that means v by t is equal to constant. Or uh, we can also write w delta w is equal to n r delta t. I've already mentioned how. In the above part, where p p delta v is equal to n r delta t, so I've just replaced this part with something else. And now I'll be going on to the cyclic process. So cyclic process is when delta u is equal to zero. It's because it's a state function. So state function is a function which only depends on initial and final point. So as you can see in cyclic process, the initial and final point is the same. So that way delta uh, u will be equal to zero. So q and w are actually not state function; they're path function, which means it depends on the path. So they are going to be there, and first law of thermodynamics can be written like this. And over here, as you can see, uh, I've given one example of cyclic process. You can search it, search on Google for more examples. So for these kind of uh, graphs, if they ask you what is the work done, there is going to be the area under the curve. So this area basically um the shaded region this area so obviously for circle because this looks like a circle will be pi r square would be the formula and if it's an ellipse then you know from um i'm not sure if you have learned it yet but there is a chapter called application of integrals so for ellipse delta a b where a and b are semi major semi minor axis that would be the formula so you have to use that formula and r or here radius would be given in a different fashion like they might have put a dotted line like this and they might have put a dotted line like this and they might have given this to be 5 so that way you have to understand that it means radius and you should use pi r um, pi r square for the formula so another part that you have to know another interesting part is that whenever you find like calculate the area the sign depends on the direction of this arrow as you can see in this arrow it's going clockwise so it, it should be positive pi r square if it was anti clockwise then it should be negative pi r square so that's about the sign and cyclic process now we are about to finish the chapter um the processes part would be very confusing for students but i have made like written it in the most simplified form ever with everything in just one box so yeah next one will be heat engine i have taken this picture from ncert so you can just look at how it would look the di diagrammatic representation what you have to know is eta or here this symbol eta means Efficiency is given by um, eta is equal to work done by q1, which is equal to work done can be written as q1 minus q2. So you can write it as q1 minus q2 by q1. And obviously, if yet another disturbance, I've I paused it. Um, so eta is equal to one minus q2 by q1, as you can see, will be equal to one minus t2 by t1. So this would be the final formula. And if you're wondering why it's t2 by t1, you should know that q q can be replaced by t in the equation. So for heat engine, this formula is very important. You have to just note it down. Um, the above part is like more or less like a derivation. I would still recommend you to know it, but yeah, that is the above. And eta meaning efficiency, by the way. Efficiency of the engine is how you have to say it. So next one would be refrigerator. And refrigerator, as you can see, uh, the diagram uh, is given, is taken from NCERT. It's just like above, but over here, it's not efficiency. It's something called coefficient of performance, which is given by alpha, and it is q2 by w. So when you do the same thing as above, there is no simplification as such. So this would be the final formula: q2 by q1 minus q2 is equal to t2 by t1 minus t2. Alpha meaning coefficient of performance. Next one would be second law of thermodynamics. So there are two statements in the NCERT. I have actually, um, I have actually just written the two statements. Not written. I've just um, copy pasted the definition from statements from NCERT. So both of them I'll just be highlighting. You can go through them, and I'm pretty sure it's important for your theory exam. So you might have just um, learned it anyways. So next one will be reversible and irreversible process. So I've written over here in terms of thermodynamics, a reversible process is where the participants go back to its initial form by inculcating minor or negligible changes in their surrounding. Contrary, um, in contrary, an irreversible process is a naturally occurring phenomenon which does not go back to its original state. So irreversible process is like the actual real life case. So I'll just be highlighting and I'll be writing real life. IRL. I'll be writing IRL, or I think I don't know. I'll just write IRL. So I R L. This is actually so bad. I'm using a mouse. So IRL. And whereas reversible, it's like a hypothetical situation, as I mentioned above. So it's like not going to happen in real life. So I'll just write IRL once again. But I'll just write. I'll just put an X mark. So this is going to be real life situation. So here, reversible, it happens slowly, like quasi static. So it's just minor or negligible changes because you'll be doing it slowly. Like when you do it slowly, there won't be huge change. Whereas irreversible, you'll be doing like a huge change. You can imagine a piston, and um, yeah, that would be it. So next one, Carnot's engine. So this diagram is from NCERT. You will be knowing the derivation, or you might have attempted to learn the derivation. It's there in the NCERT. NCERT. So what happens is, over here, this one is isothermal, and this one is adiabatic. Once again, this one is isothermal, and this one once again is adiabatic. Note down P1, P, uh, P2, V4, T2 everywhere, wherever it's written, because based on that, there is this formula. 
which is eta once again um, efficiency, which is one minus t two by t one. And what you have to know, this is very this is very very important. So I'll be like putting a box in a in a high with a highlighter. Q one by Q two is equal to t one by t two. So this can be like written in any fashion. Like you can write it as Q one times t two. Um, divided by Q2 is equal to T1. So if they ask you for T1, you, you can write it like this, and so on. Basically, what I'm trying to say is they might like uh, give you three terms, and they can ask you for the fourth one. And the statement will begin such that in in a Carnot's engine or something like that. So next one type of problems um, as usual I'll be mentioning. So here, as you can see, I've drawn like two graphs. Uh, not draw, I have not drawn it, but it's from the internet from a website. So as you can see, two types of curve: isothermal and adiabatic. So if you see adiabatic is like having a more steep slope over here. It has a steeper slope compared to isothermal. So based on that, uh, we have this formula: dP by dV slope. By the way, you will be learning it in application of um, Derivatives. So dP by dV, as you can see, it's a p versus v graph. That's why it's dP by dV is equal to minus p by v. So basically, the slope of isothermal um, isothermal graph will be this. So that's the slope. Whereas for a, a for an adiabatic graph, the slope will be this dP by dV is equal to minus gamma p um, by v. Next one, polytropic process. It's not there in the NCERT, so I'm just going to have you mention it. It's like more more for J, uh, JWE. So PV to the power n is equal to constant, just like how adiabatic PV to the power gamma is equal to constant. Or here n can be zero, one, inf infinite gamma, and that way the symbols will change. There is also um, there is also like a formula for C, which is C is equal to I think CV plus uh, I don't remember properly CV plus some uh, I don't know R by one minus one plus n or something. But it's again not for CT as such. So with this I have finished the chapter. So if you like were able to understand and if you have doubts, you can join Telegram group. Please do share it with your friends, classmates, um, and also like the video, subscribe, share. I put in a lot of effort. I'll be uploading more videos soon. So all the best. Work hard. See you.